Well, today I'm actually biting off a bit more than I probably would normally. And this is an old CB100N that I've got. And I've got various bits and bobs. Now these wheels are pretty rusty and I'm not sure I would trust these spokes anymore. It's the same at the front end. In fact, the front end is probably even worse. Yeah, it's pretty chronic. So, my plan is to take the hubs. This is another wheel, another spare wheel I've got from a Sim Wolf. This has got a disc brake front end on it. So, I'm going to use the Sim Wolf front fork. So, I'm going to take this hub out for the front end and fit it. But I'm going to undo all of these. Now, as usual, I don't have the correct tool. So at the moment, I'm just trying to loosen off some of these spokes with a, an adjustable or a crescent wrench, as our American cousins would call it. So an adjustable spanner. Um, so I'm going to go around this. It's actually, I don't know what's happening here today, but it's actually a sunny day. So I'm not complaining, it's probably about 6 degrees, but uh, I'm in a t-shirt, as you can see. Um, so I'm going to go around and see if I can undo all of these. I've put some WD-40 into the ends of the spoke nipples there. So my plan is to take this, which is a 17 inch, it's a 17 by 250. I'm going to take, again, I've never done this before, so I have no idea how this is going to turn out, but I'm going to give it a go. So I'm going to take this apart, this hub I don't need, and this disc I don't need, and I'm going to take this rim. The reason I'm taking this rim off is, and I knew this when I bought it anyway, uh, you can see there, it's been flattened. Now, for a small capacity bike, it's probably okay, but the rims have obviously been rusted and then painted with black gloss paint, which it's not really the look I'm looking for, although I'm not looking for a showpiece either. You can see as well that rim looks a bit iffy there. This tyre is obviously not going to be of any use to me because it's an 18, and I think if you go to a 17 you get better. A better choice of tire so I'm gonna see how far I get undoing all of these I'm, I mean on the on the CB100N rear it'll probably just be a case of uh, cutting all the spokes but I want to actually see if I can reuse these spokes with the 17 inch or use the 17 inch spokes with this original hub I don't know if that's likely so I've never done this before, but uh, let's see how we get on. These uh, spoke nipples are loose now, as you can see. I can turn that with my fingers. I've decided before I take the spokes out, I would just take the disc off. Disc looks in uh very good shape actually hardly had any use um so my plan now is I've, I've obviously got all these spokes loose i know that the spokes will come out part of my part of the method of my madness here is that i'm going to measure what these spoke lengths are and then i might just buy some new spokes but obviously i'm going to have to take i'm going to have to unlace the rim from this wheel and then see if I can match it up just with the spokes I've got. So I've got that set there. And I've obviously got this set here. So I've got two sets of spokes to play with. Looking at this, I did have a look at some YouTube videos last night. If you take, say, this particular spoke and you go across it 90 degrees. So straight out would be here. And then we come one, two, three, four. So it's going four and then obviously come along again you would go 90 degrees one two three four so that appears to be the spacing 
obviously on the top and I'm, I'm assuming it's exactly the same underneath on the other side so I'm now going to see how well I can uh, unlace this wheel which is going to be a lot easier because there's not a tire on it so assuming I can get this off no problem the next step will be to def deflate this tire and see if I can get the tire off the rim then I'll remove all the spokes and then I'll try placing this rim in first with these spokes. See if it looks like that might work. It may not work. Uh, if that doesn't work, I'll use this hub with these spokes. If that doesn't work, I'll be on to eBay to buy whatever length. I think these, I think both sets, from what I can tell, are somewhere about 180 millimeters. So. We'll just see how that goes. And again, as I say, I have never ever attempted this in my life. I have trued up bicycle wheels before, you know, years and years ago. That wasn't a problem. Uh, this is the first time I've ever decided to replace a rim on a spoked motorcycle wheel with one from something completely different. And I don't even know what that's from. Somebody might recognise that uh, that stamp, but I haven't got a clue what it is. And I think I'd need to do a lot of rubbing down before I see the equivalent on uh, on this rim. So I'm now going to see if I can get all these spokes loosened off and take the spoke nipples out. Now, one of the things I've noticed on this set... I've got a little uh, six millimeter. If you can see that, I don't know. Well, anyway, take my word for it, it's a six millimeter spanner. And it seems to fit on there quite well. And that seems to be able to undo it. So I'm not having to use. Sorry, it stopped recording there for some reason. So I've got this little six millimeter spanner. And that works extremely well. Mind you, this hasn't been painted. Get my big fat fingers in the way there. This one hasn't been painted. Um, so that's turning out. So I'll slacken all these off and I'll see what I've got to work with. I've no idea what this wheel's off. I got it with the, the donor bike I've got for the rebuild. Well, these ones have all undone quite easily. Uh, a lot easier with a screwdriver on it. Phillips head. I don't know if it's GIS or Phillips, but anyway, it's a cross thread. And they're coming off quite nicely. That's one there. The only thing I'm noticing is these spokes are slightly different. Um, head on, they're not 90 degrees. So I don't know if I can still use these or if i'm going to have to use the other spokes i'll need to do a bit of research on that but i shall continue on undoing these spokes like i say they're coming out very nicely the brand it seems to be for this rim is a unison so i'll look that up and see if i can find out who uses it it's probably some chinese brand or something um Well, I just had a random thought there. You're always watching these uh, YouTube videos, especially American videos, and everybody's got bloody power tools. So, why should I use that when I can use my drill, my Aldi Special, the twenty nine ninety nine Aldi Special? That's wrong, me. Ooh, don't know if you saw that. I think I had my fat fingers in the way, but that's a lot quicker, isn't it? So, I'll take the rest of them out. Uh, it's now 25 to 3 in the afternoon. Let's see how quickly it takes me to get all of these spokes out. Oh, I've, I need to use... That's the spokes out. And this is the rim. This one... Uh, 
appears to be alloy actually, so hopefully it's a better quality room. Uh, it's it's almost quarter to three, so it's quicker obviously if you use a power tool to buzz them out than using a manual screwdriver. But the thing to do is make sure you've got them turned out enough so that the the bit will fit in the end. Um, but yeah, I'm quite. Well, quite happy that I've got it to bits anyway, whether I'll get it back together again. And on the other wheel, that one there, remains to be seen. But uh, that's where we are now. So I'm going to let the tyre down on this one and uh, see if I can get the tyre off and see what happens when I try and relace it with either these spokes or the spokes on the wheel. I don't know what's happened. I've counted 35 spokes. There are 36 in that rim. So I've lost a spoke somehow. Maybe these things evaporate when you take them out, but uh, as you can see, it's organized efficiency here. So it may well just be kicking about somewhere and I'm just too blind to see it. <clears throat> but my next step now is to take the tire and the tube out of this uh, this old wheel and let's see what I can do with it. It's an unexpected complication isn't there? So this obviously is being painted at some point so I'm struggling to get the uh, retaining nut off the Schrader valve so I think I'm going to have to get a pair of grips hold that and then use a 12 millimeter spanner. Probably use a ring spanner on it. Got the tire off easy enough. Not too big a deal. Uh, I'll take this off and see if I can get these spokes out. Some of them, as I say, are already loosened. Or should be all loosened, I think. Maybe there's the odd one or two. That one doesn't feel like it's turning. But anyway, I'll get the spanner on. You can definitely see that. Uh, that rim damage it's not drastic I'm sure it could be bashed out into shape but I'd rather get rid of the uh, chrome plated uh, wheels anyway so so next thing I'm going to do is see if I can get this out and then I'm going to remove the hub from the rim I, uh, here's my redneck engineering solution. So I've got a 30 mil spanner onto the, uh, there's a nut at the back there. And then I've got a 12 mil deep dish socket. So that should get me the, uh, the inner tube out. It's actually starting to look a bit, uh, crappy the weather here. So I think... I'll get this off and I'll start tidying things up and uh, but when I'll, I'll finish doing this first I'll get it and then I'll get everything tidied up and that'll be me for today. I have to look at that detail there. So I had a 30mm spanner on this side of the rim and I had a 12mm to turn that off so at least I've uh, I've still got an 18 an 18 inch inner tube that could still be used so that's what it is King's tire there you go American spelling for our American viewers 2.25 to 2.5 by 18 so that thread obviously needs cleared up very slightly but uh, anyway, that can be repurposed at some point. So next thing, take the rim tape off and see about getting all these uh, spokes out. Come inside and I'm using a flat.
And that seems to be taking them out. Yeah. I need to do it. Two hands, but uh, I'm using the flathead and that's that's brought these out in no time at all. Well, that's it out. It's fine. So, there we go. There's the spider. I'll take all the spokes out. I'll put all the spoke nipples on each other, make sure I've not dropped any. I think one did actually fall somewhere on the floor. But I'll see how that lines up with the new rim. Definitely time for a, definitely time for a cup of tea now. Um, from what I understand, again, I have never done this before in my chuff. Um, so what I understand is a 90 degree spoke goes to the outside and a greater, you'll see the difference in the, maybe I should get a better example. So you'll see that's like splayed out. And this one is 90 degrees. So that one's splayed out a bit and this one's 90 degrees. So I've sorted them into three piles of six. So I've got 18 spokes there. And I should have 18 spokes there. So... Um, so there you go. <laughs> so that's my spokes for the outer edge of the hub. <clears throat> so I'm assuming that means... It goes like that, and then these ones, they go like that. So anyway, it's time for a cup of tea, and uh, I shall get back to you after I've uh, had a cup of tea. Well, something wildly ha exciting happened today. Hermes brought me this uh, package, which happens to be a set of very fancy pit bike spokes. So I'm using the original hub with uh, a 17 inch rim. It was previously an 18 inch rim. So the original spokes appeared to be too long. So what are these ones? These appear to be the inner. I think they're the inner spokes. Or are the outer. Maybe these are the outer. Outer is the 90 degree. They're uh, a rather strange colour. Sort of anodized kind of green purpley depending on the, the angle of the light not really my kind of style but i thought so i'm going to try rebuilding a wheel never having done so in my entire life apart from a bicycle wheel probably about 20 years ago um i might as well start with something cheap which i can just essentially throw away so uh, I'll just double check all of these and then I've got, got the nipples in there as well. I've got these um, on Facebook through, I, I can't remember the exact title, but it's something like Mon Monkey Bike Owners Group or something. Facebook. Um, and I can put a link up to the chap's name or, or something of that nature. Um, if anybody wants to contact them to get a set of these. Uh, so anyway, I'm now going to take the other wheel to bits, which I had kind of done. I'd sort of started putting spokes in there, but they were too long. So I'm now going to strip down this hub again, take all the uh, spokes out, and then attempt to lace the uh, the new spokes in there and hopefully they're going to be the right size so it's like a bloody bomb site in here i've even brought the the frame in because i'm going to use the uh, the forks as a stand and i'm going to put a couple of um k 
cable ties on there, which I'll use for the, the up and down, and then I'll have a cable tie to touch against the side for the side to side movement. That's the plan. How that's going to work out? Well, we're going to find out. I've now done the um, the inner spokes on both sides of the hub. See, I'm not a particular fan of the colour, but uh, for £8.50 delivered for a set of spokes for a first time attempt, I'm quite happy to go with the flow. So, basically you put this at an angle that you'll see will correspond, be basically in line with it. And then you go one, two, three, four. Same thing again, one, two, three, four. So you do that all the way around in one direction. <clears throat> flip the flip the bike over. And obviously in this view, it's the purple spokes. They'll go in. You're obviously going to do the cross spoke. And then it's going to go, I think it's six from it. Uh, so you, you see you're here. And you want to know where to do the, the next one on the other side. One, two, three, four, five, six. So you do six, and then you do your four from the six point. Again, I have never done this before, and this is based on looking at stuff on YouTube. So I'm not going to teach people how to suck eggs because there's people who are far more educated and experienced in um, lace and wheels than I am. So suffice to say, if you need to do this part, uh, there's plenty of videos on YouTube with much better camera angles. So anyway, I've done that. Now I need to uh, put the outer spokes in. And the outer spokes, as a reminder again, are the 90 degree angle. The uh, inner ones kind of come up at a slightly larger than 90 degree angle. So that's my next step. Well, I've managed to get all the spokes in and I'm just taking out, see these ones are still quite slack, these seem to be for some reason longer than the other ones, so I'm just taking any play out of this, the other ones seem to be quite decent. So this, this, I've got this one left, that's the last one. And I've kind of briefly put it in that little jig <clears throat> there. This jig here with that uh, axle, but it's the wrong size. I need to get the other axle. It was a spare axle I had. So once I get that, and I'll see about getting that trued up. Um, but so far, with jamming the axle and spinning it, it doesn't look like it's all over the place, so... I'm hoping it's not too far off, but, you know, famous last words, as I say, I've never done this with a motorcycle wheel, so goodness knows how it's going to turn out, but uh, this is what it looks like so far, the spoke patterns, they all seem to look the same, so fingers crossed it's right, it's been done properly. You'll be able to see better what I'm meaning, so all of the spokes... They seem to be okay, but the fourth one, which is the outer spokes on the speedo drive side, they seem to protrude for some reason. So I don't know why that would be. Um, the other ones seem to be okay. Maybe I've done something wrong, but uh, time will tell. And on this case, I noticed that uh, the uh, pit bike spokes, they're actually a three millimeter nipple for tightening these up. I was thinking I was going to have to go out and buy like a, a spoke key, but it seems if you've got small spanners, they, they do the job fine. And then if you've not got <clears throat> some of that, you can use uh, a Phillips, you know, a fairly blunt Phillips. I don't know if it's Phillips or GIS, but anyway, it's a crosshead screw. You can buzz them in. So I think that's me done for tonight. It's now 
Uh, quarter past 11 at night, <clears throat> and I've been farting about with this since roughly 8.30, so I think probably that's long enough, really. I did actually put these spokes in um, twice, I think it was, and I just wasn't happy with it, so I took it to bits. And then I looked at a guide which is called How to Spoke a Motorcycle Wheel, and I followed that one. Um, it's an older one from, well, it's, uh, the upload was, uh, May 9th, 2017, and they're all pretty much of a muchness, the videos that you'll see, <clears throat> but that one was, uh, it's an old video from, like, 2005, 2006, and it's Moto Prof 1441, uh, the channel, so, uh, that's the guide I used, so I'm going to check these. There's still some, obviously, that are slack, but I'll go ahead and tighten these up before I get a cup of tea. Um, and then tomorrow I'll have them in the upside down jig and I'll use the, uh, the cable tie method to see if I can true them or just how badly they are. But before I pack up for the night, I'll, uh, I'll go around and I'll just like there, that's that's loose. I'll just take take anything out of that, and then tomorrow morning I'll carry on. Well, here's my as-built wheel before truing. So there's not too much up and down anyway. I'm quite happy to see that. There's certainly a bit of to and fro in. So that shouldn't be too difficult a task. What yet again, famous last words. Yeah, so I'll now get some cable ties. Well, it's another sunny day here. It's actually been quite cold and dull, actually, but it's sunny now. So this is the rebuilt rim with the non-standard spokes and the original hub. So I've now trued this. And I'm quite happy with that. Any, uh, any misalignment is probably more to do with my hands rather than anything else. So, yeah, so it's done. Uh, so that's the £8.50 uh, spokes. The included rim that came with the project bike. And I'm quite pleased with that. So, it'll do for a first attempt. So now I'm going to fit uh, the rim tape back on. I've actually been using my trusty grinder. Not the application, but uh, the tool. Um, because I had some longer spokes, so I've buzzed them down. Uh, I'll just double check it to see if there's nothing protruding too much. I think it'll all be hidden by the rim tape, okay? That's maybe slightly protruding. Yeah, that one there might... Again, I don't think it's going to be a problem, really, because it's quite a, quite a depth, this bit, anyway. But uh, while I've got the thing off, I might as well just buzz it down a bit further. So that one there. So I'll buzz that down, then I'll put the rim tape on. Eagle-eyed amongst you will notice that I've put the disc brake back on. But that's the rim tape fitted. Now, what I'm going to do as a temporary measure before I get... Uh, chunky tyre is I'm just going to fit an old tyre from a Honda Super Cup uh, and see how it goes on as far as the wheel's concerned and then I'll be ordering I think a 3x17 tyre probably made by V Rubber or such like. I ended up on uh, eBay last week <clears throat> and I bought a job lot of uh, Pirelli 17 inch inner tubes. So this is what's going to go 
into this wheel with the old Honda Cup tyre. And this is my uh, portable inflation station. If you ever come across one of these, you can hook these up to your car uh, tyre compressor. It's really handy for things like this, little jobs where, you know, you don't have uh, an accessory outlet or a cigarette lighter outlet. Handy, so a couple of bits of wire, the negative onto the side, and the positive onto the middle, and that'll inflate your tyre without having to be next to a car.